Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, greetings of peace, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Dean Show. My next guest, Faz Apex, is a 26-year-old Muslim Palestinian born and raised in California. At the age of 14, he became a member of the gaming group called Faz Clan. He has spent the last 11 years as a pivotal member of the organization and is one of the four original founders of the business. He has since transitioned out of the content creation and into the leadership role in the company. So Faz Apex, our next guest, is one of the owners of the largest gaming organizations in the world, and he's someone who also loves something more than any of these games. Let's find out what that is here with Apex. Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. This is your brother, Hamza Andreas Dorzis, and I want every single one of you to support Eddie from The Dean Show financially and otherwise. But in what way? I want you to support his new project, The Dean Center. It's going to be a transformative experience, this center. Why? Because it's going to be a masjid, it's going to be a place of worship, it's also going to have fitness facilities, and it's also going to be a dawah center to call people back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Muslims and non-Muslims. And we trust Eddie completely. I for one will take a thousand bullets for Eddie. He has a vision. He has more than 15 years of experience in the dawah. He's had a huge success with the Dean show. And he has the support of many du'at and preachers and scholars from all around the world. It's going to be an amazing project for everybody. Go to the deancenter.org, donate now. Like Masalam, how you doing? How you doing, young man? Alhamdulillah, doing well. Thank you for having me on the show. Appreciate it. It's great to have you on the show. You said something in Arabic, and some people are like, Alhamdulillah. What's uh, they they heard Habib say it? They hear you saying it now. What, what's this Alhamdulillah? What does that mean? Oh, praise and thanks to the Allah or God, the Most High. So that's beautiful. Means, Alhamdulillah. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you'll hear us saying that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so what's this uh, Faz? Eight, this Faz Clan. Talk to us about that. Yeah. Phase Clan. Phase Clan is the name. We are a gaming organization. Uh, like you mentioned, I uh, started off as like kind of a, a group of kids that just played video games together. Um, and I joined uh, the group when I was 14, 2011. And since then, um, with the rest of the gaming industry, it's kind of grown into a business and a thing a lot larger than than just that. And now, um, you know, we're one of the leading organizations in the gaming and esports world. And um, alhamdulillah, blessed to be one of the founders and uh, one of the people kind of helping run it and put it on the right path. So, um, yeah, we just we do a lot of things. We have a lot of professional gamers that play in. I think we have up to eight different games that people play in. And then we have a whole nother roster of uh, Twitch streamers and YouTube uh, and TikTok content creators and stuff. So do a couple things. we got a couple of athletes now that we have recently brought on to our team as well so we're kind of just like a youth culture uh internet you know little group trying to just take over the internet so who are these athletes you're talking about uh so right now we have uh uh brawny james lebron james jr has joined uh, is a member we have uh kyler murray who was a quarterback on the arizona cardinals uh oh man i'm gonna you could put me on the spot i'm gonna forget some of the other guys uh that's all right if it doesn't come to I mean, we, we've worked with a lot of different athletes, but those two are actual, like, solidified phase members. I mean, recently, actually, Snoop Dogg, music artist, too, signed. So, you know, we have... We have Snoop Doggy Doggy. Yeah, so we have we have a, a wide, uh, you know, group of people, alhamdulillah, that have been a part of it. So so you do you get to... Uh, are you going to get to meet Snoop Dogg? Yeah, so I did meet him. I, I mean, I, I went and I recorded a video with him. He's a really, really good guy uh, at, at his little, like, warehouse he has, so... Hopefully he can take uh, some of this advice that we're going to be giving out now. And this is from your trip, Hajj, right? Yeah. So I want to read this. I want to go ahead and because this is what we're going to be talking about, something that you love more than any of the games. So yeah. this is, uh, I believe this is, this is you. This is no blessing in, the, in life compares to the blessing of being, and I'm going to just define this term, one who has submitted to the will of the creator of the heavens and earth. No, a Muslim, nothing gives you more peace and purpose in this world. Inshallah, God willing, we all will be reunited together in the next life in the highest levels of Jannah, paradise. 
Now, this is uh, beautiful advice. You're saying here at the end, I highly encourage anyone who has any interest or feels like they are missing a purpose in life to look into Islam, submission to the Creator, not the creation. May God guide us all to the best for us in this life and the next. What was going through your mind? You're in front of the first house of worship built by Emma, uh, by Abraham to commemorate the worship of one and only one God, and you're giving this wonderful advice. What's going? I mean, what, what's what are you feeling at the time? Yeah, Alhamdulillah, um, I've been blessed to be able to visit Mecca, Medina a couple times. Alhamdulillah, and when I posted that, uh, I think I just got back from a trip there, and uh, honestly, I talk about it, I've talked about it. A, couple times recently in the past couple of years but so I, I like i mentioned i joined phase when i was 14 so i've been kind of online creating content since i was a 14 year old and over that last 11 e i just turned 26 yesterday actually alhamdulillah so like it's been 11 years of me doing this and not until really the last maybe two or three years have i really kind of um realized the platform you know that i've been blessed with to uh share you know the message of islam and also, like, sh you know, shine some light on things that are happening among around the world and kind of using my platform for good. So when I joined originally, I was kind of, you know, I grew up in America my whole life. So I was kind of, uh, I don't want to say bullied. I don't want to, like, make it. I wasn't bullied, you know, not to, not to make it sound worse than it was. But there was a guy in the organization who was, like, the biggest at the time. I compare it to, like, let's say for all the football fans out there. I don't want to say soccer. <laughs> that let's say you join, uh, you know, Barcelona at the time and you're the biggest Messi fan when he was on Barcelona and then he's like making fun of you for being Arab and Muslim or whatever that's what happened to me so as a 14 year old that happened right off the bat since then I kind of just really kept to myself didn't really speak on my background my religion nothing like that um, and then in the last couple of years I realized like you know it's not only nothing to be ashamed of but it's something to be super proud of so um, um, and at the end of the paragraph you read as well with you know, people, I've seen a lot of people, the, re the reason I put that in about people not really having a purpose in life. Alhamdulillah, I've met so many people, so many successful people over the last couple of years. And it's crazy to me to see, uh, like, you know, off camera, how people's lives are, you know, all the people that have all the success in the world and people th think that they would probably be the happiest people in the world. Like I see so many people that just feel like they're missing something. And I truly sure. think that that's what it is. It's like you said, connection with the one god with the you know submission to you phrased it perfectly to the creator not the creation and i'm i you know i just i feel like there's a um obligation on me to spread it you know and alhamdulillah that's what i try to do i i obviously am f focusing and working on myself first and foremost try to be the best muslim i can be but like it's not even it's it's really it like that post specifically is really like you guys need it like there's people out there that need it and like you know, people haven't been exposed to, to certain things. And I was just, you know, feeling great coming back from Mecca, alhamdulillah. And I thought I would post it. So it's awesome. Even I just saw the likes on it right now, too. Like, obviously, I don't post it for likes, but it's crazy to me. SubhanAllah to see the engagement on it is better than any of the engagement I've on any of my other posts that I've posted recently. It might be the most liked picture I've posted, which is crazy. And really just showed me, too, like, um, for the Muslim world, kind of, I feel like, all right, I got a little bit of a voice here that I got to use, inshallah, for the right reason. So it was good to see. Mashallah, that's what I'm talking about. So nothing to be, you realize it was nothing to be ashamed of, but something to be proud of. It's the way of Jesus. It's the way of Moses, Abraham, the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad. This is the same way of life that they lived. Islam, submission to one God, to the will of God. This is something that I've had. You have iced tea. You had, I've had freeway on uh, part of JC's crew. You had loon. Uh, Amir Mujay Muhaddith, uh, St Stephen Jackson, Stephen Jackson, Stack, you heard of yeah, him? Yeah, of course. And, and m many of these people, they're also coming to Islam, you know, when your mind is open. And what do you think, like, since you mentioned some of these other uh, celebrities, some of these other athletes like Snoop Doggy Dog, how receptive? Because at one point, I think he was going towards the nation. Yeah, I, I have a memory in my head as well. I was like, you remember that? Seeing him like. Something seemed dressed up maybe in like some traditional clothing or something. Um, but yeah, I, that's the thing too. I've noticed, you know, I, the nation obviously is like a path, has been a path for some people towards, you know, the, the I guess, yeah, I will say the true Islam because I've actually looked more into the nation recently and I've really seen the differences. I never knew until recently, but 
you know, like, yeah, subhanAllah, I think a lot of people kind of have a lot of celebrities and a lot of uh, athletes and stuff have seemed to go down that route. And as we saw Muhammad Ali and Malcolm X, that led them to uh, the core Islam. But yeah, it's, you know, I th- I think actually more than ever, people are, res- are more, I mean, at least in our generation, right, compared to the last, the last, let's just say, 100 years, it seems like so many people are, are not only converting. I know you probably see more than I do, but it's on social media. So I see so many people talking about their their path to Islam, and like I just feel a lot of people are really open minded. Um, we have a lot of amazing role models like Habib, who have like really shined a bright, beautiful light on like what it is to be a Muslim. Um, obviously, Muhammad Ali as well is one of the most influential figures in Islam in the last couple in the last hundred years at least. And like, um, yeah, I think it's great when we have athletes and people that that well known that embody what an actual muslim is as well you know like like habib that's why people that's he's opened the door for so many people to convert because his actions and his character which you know i'm sure he tries to resemble the prophet وسلم, and he does an amazing job at being what you know acting like a muslim so th- those are the things that i think open people's eyes especially in a culture where everybody's focused on themselves and focused on material and stuff like that that when you see someone like habib who like doesn't care about anything but God and his family and doing what he does, like it, it's a little weird to people. And it kind of like it, it catches them off guard. It makes them want to look into it. So like, alhamdulillah, we've, we, it's the best way to live by example. So I just think like this next generation of athletes, like, and, and celebrities, I really think like we're going to keep seeing more and more. I know we, you've mentioned a lot. There's a lot of other athletes as well that have converted. And I just think it's, uh, it's interesting. It's just interesting to see the spread of Islam right now amongst like mainstream media. So it's cool. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, you. it reminds me of when the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, he made dua, supplication for the two Omars, you know, yeah. one of them to accept Islam. And this dua reached and we see the impact when Umar, radiallahu anh, when he accepted Islam. So when some of these figures, you imagine, you know, the following that they have, and uh, how many people are glued, you know, imitating them, watching them. And when they tor- turn towards the right path, they can really do some amazing good and uh, benefit from any of the things that you're talking about. There's a quote here that you said, and it's very powerful. I want you to elaborate on this. You said, there's no chance in earth, no Elon Musk or anyone to have me take a drink of alcohol. And we see you know, problems. We just saw the Johnny Depp. Uh, you don't have to know much about him, but it was all over. You know, it was a circus. Their, their lives were just plastered all over. And he would, for instance, uh, may God Almighty Allah guide him and Amber to the, to the truth, to Islam. But you can see alcohol played a big major role in the problems that were happening. He was waking up in the morning drinking, you know, happy hour all throughout the day. But imagine, like, this is uh, what gave you this discipline to say yeah. something like that where not even Elon Musk can... <laughs> I don't even know. I don't, I'm you. not sure where that quote's from, but sounds sounds right, though. I, I Yeah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. That was you. as a quote from you, yeah? I know. I, I'm saying I don't... I, it's funny. I don't even... I don't remember saying that, but definitely, alhamdulillah, like, I definitely live by that. Like, I'm very happy to say that i've never even taken a sip like you said never dabbled into that drugs any of that stuff and for me alhamdulillah it's been pretty easy i think i think just um i don't know for some people you know it just sets in easier to their brains They're like all right be- this is bad i'm not gonna do it and like i've just you know alcohol i've never been really tempted towards uh even drugs anything like nothing like that have ever really interested me uh, but a lot of people around me especially in my scene that i'm in uh, with work uh, partake and drinking and smoking and stuff like that and i've just really seen the the negatives to it i haven't really seen any positives i mean it's funny like a lot of my old roommates and stuff like would always tell me like man i understand why you don't drink and like i respect why you don't drink and why you don't smoke and why this and that and it's just funny because i'm like it's not me it's just it's my religion it's i'm just following it and like you know it's it's and even gambling too is another thing that like I've just seen these things happen and like, yeah, in the moment, that's the one thing I can't lie. Gambling is something that, man, alhamdulillah, it's haram because I would be an addict if it wasn't. And like, and like I know that and like I could see why it's haram and I could, you could see the wisdom in, in it, just like the wisdom in um, alcohol and, you know, everything else being haram. But yeah, it's alhamdulillah, it's been pretty simple for me, I think, in the household I was raised in and also my community and like 
the friends that I grew up around, uh, most of my my closest friends come from the masjid. So like we all have the same, you know, we all have have the same morals. We all follow the same like, you know, alhamdulillah, we're all Muslim. We all follow. We all we all go about life the same. So like it was pretty simple. I was never really pressured to, down the path of any of those things. And it's just just easy for me to stay away from. Alhamdulillah, Allah put it in me to not really be tempted by those things. And like, you know, I've I've had some opportunities with sponsorships and with 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 alcohol brands and gambling brands and all those things. And alhamdulillah, I've, you know, just again growing up, my mom always tell me, uh, you know, that when you when you leave something for Allah, you'll be give some be given something better. Or when you stay away from something, like Allah will replace with better. And I've seen that alhamdulillah happen in my life, and it just it's like it's not even a question for me. Like alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, and inshallah, I'm always able to stay away from these things and and uh, not dabble into anything bad. But like that gray line to me, I never really even try to walk, get near it. So like alhamdulillah, it's 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 not something too difficult for me to. Allah says it's haram. I try to do my best to stay away from it. You know how many parents right now, or not just parents, just individuals out there, they're like, I wish I can stay away from alcohol. Yeah, I know. You know, I wish I can go ahead and just leave this alone. They're seeing the disaster yeah. that's happening in their lives due to this. But, you know, this is amazing to have someone as young as you to be sometimes, you know, around some very influential people and peer pressure. Yeah. Uh, you know how that works. If you're around, you know, uh, if you don't have a strong foundation, you're not solid, you know, you can bend. And one, just one time, it needs to be that one sip, that one buzz, yep. and that's all she wrote. No, yeah, unfortunately, it's a real addiction. Like, that's something people don't really understand either. It's like a lot of people can't help themselves. So, like, may Allah help anyone who's going through it. Um, even if maybe at one point they made the conscious decision to take part in that stuff, like, it's not the easiest thing in the world to stop. And uh, I think, like, I don't know. Sometimes you have other experiences where you get a little, you get a little taste of what they might be feeling in their bodies, and it's easy to understand. I know it's, it, it's something they can't control. You know, a lot of people can't control it, and it's a tough thing. And everyone has their tests. Alhamdulillah, you know, for me, it hasn't been something I've been tested with. Inshallah, I never am tested with it. And like you said, anyone that is, inshallah, they're able to you know, overcome those temptations and shock. But this is the antidote, what we started off with in your post, Islam. This is yeah. it. This is for all the social ills, you know, people, why, at, at the end of the day, look, Apex, why should I give it up? For what? There, if, if I'm not believing in something greater than myself, living for a true purpose, if I'm just there, you know, fulfilling my desires, what's the point of, you know, it all at the end of the day? And why should I really stop? You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not living for something higher, but you are obviously. And that's where, would you say that's, is that where the discipline, you know, the self-discipline really kicked in because of Islam? No, of course. Uh, of course. Alhamdulillah. Like it again, like I blessed to be born Muslim, to grow up amongst Muslims, to just always be raised with that mentality. Cause like, you know, I'm 26 now. I don't, I don't know if I wasn't, if I didn't grow up in a family that was, even quote unquote religious or in a part of a community or whatever, I don't know what my life would be like. But for me, it's not even a question. Like these things are been things that I've known since I was young, that I've learned since I was young. So like, yeah, that discipline, that fear of Allah in your heart, um, has just been instilled in me since I've been little. And it's been, you know, it's an easy thing, but a hundred percent. And I, I think that I think that's a interesting thing that happens to a lot of people too. And I respect them so much more than even people like myself who've been born into it is when people on their own go out and seek it and they come to that conclusion on their own and they they realize on their own all right you know alhamdulillah even if they live in good lives if they live in difficult lives they realize like th there must be more than just what's going on now you know and they come to that conclusion on their own and they're able to kind of turn it around it's a lot more difficult than it is for someone like me who's been born into it and who's never had you know much struggles i've been blessed with parents that have taken care of us and stuff so like you know i <laughs> if I was doing anything else, it would be, it would be, it, it would, it'd be harder for me to be on the wrong path than the right one. Alhamdulillah. So like, yeah, you know, I, I, back to what I said earlier too, about people that I've seen like around me that have so much success, or whatever, and they're missing something. Um, it's just taking a second to take a step back and like facing that, you know, a lot of people don't like to face that feeling and that's why they continue to party and drink and do drugs and stuff. Cause it's easier than sitting there and, and, and kind of, having that inner conversation with yourself and like what's missing here i have all the money i wanted i have all the success i reached all my goals i know like what's missing people don't want to have that conversation with themselves but i think when people do um 
a lot of the time maybe it's this it's some sort of faith at least that that uh they realize is what's missing and i believe it's it's hard honestly i can't imagine living this life and thinking that when i die it's just done like i can't imagine i wouldn't be able to comprehend that it makes sense you know like it would be hard for me to see people dying and your family and to go through all these hard times and to feel like you know one like this is it and two i'm not gonna like be like these people are not going to be account uh, accounted accountable for what they did to me for example you know like i've had some tough experiences in business and stuff where i'm like you know what alhamdulillah it's easy for, like i'm good knowing that allah takes count of everything and i'll get back whatever i deserve at some point and like like again like it's just so much better than living a life without that that um that belief because it's it, i just would not be able to take so many things on a day-to-day basis if i didn't know that you know, it's all going to come full circle at some point, inshallah, when we stand in front of Allah. And I'm sure we're going to have other things to worry about than one guy wronging us. But, you know, it's like it's a good peace of mind. And alhamdulillah, it makes sense. So I've, ha- I've had so many opportunities to sit with people also who are in the limelight. And one person comes to mind. I mentioned him a little earlier, Loon. And there's a statement by him. He said, we were paying for the disease while the cure was free. So what would you say to many of the youth, uh, people who are into gaming and they can relate to you and you know they might be tempted they're like they're inquisitive or they're tempted to go and accept invitation to the nightclub yeah they want to go hang out and you know possibly they're going to be around other people who are passing around the joints yeah, you know, yeah. you know yeah, yeah. what other things that can come with it the drugs and whatnot and yeah. and and they're close to slipping but they're listening to you yeah. right and yeah. They're thinking, and many people are warned. Look, there's nothing out there. You're gonna. It's like a broken bridge. You're gonna fall off, right? So, what would you say? Yeah. So that's that's where it gets tough for me. Um, when uh, you see people partaking in certain things, people that you're not super close with, right? But that are Muslim and stuff, and like, it's hard. It, like, I try to walk a walk that line carefully. Of like, you know, I don't want to make any comments or say things to people that will push them even further you know it's it's always a tricky thing and we see that in our communities people think that they're helping and they make things a lot worse and it's listen i to my close friends and stuff that i've talked to that have dabbled into like the world that i've dabbled into it's (laughs) like people that i'm really close with i say it very straight to them like don't even think about opening that door to any haram money um and even with that, like, again, I don't want to sound hypocritical because even myself, like I've had a recently realized, like I used to have a lot of music in my videos and stuff like that. And like, it kind of hit me like a train at some point where I was like, wait a minute, like, I never thought about this being haram. And, you know, Allah, Adam, inshallah, Allah knows best of how he's going to deal with all those things. But like, I even had that realization recently. I was like, all right. And I did what I, you know, I took my steps in my personal way with talking to sh- some people and figure out what I should do to try to like, you know, do what I can to repair that. But like when it comes to opening the door with obvious haram, like, like uh, gambling sponsors or, or, or drinking sponsors, or like you said, even drinking and or falling into peer pressure or people try to give you a drink and stuff like that. Like, yeah, it's not, of course it's not worth it. And there'll be no blessings in anything you do. If, if you're getting off, if you're getting into a new industry and like you start off on the wrong foot, like why would Allah put any barakah in or blessings in your money and your, success you know what i'm saying like you know you, it's 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 just it's just obviously something that is not going to help you out in this life or the next maybe in the moment um someone will think you you know it'll help you with like a personal relationship but like dude in this world in business what i've another thing i've realized i'm not i don't act like i'm the most experienced person i'm young uh, but i'm that i've had a lot of years of working with people and like at some point <laughs> a lot of people will flip on you either way no matter if you do all the things to make it right them and like people really are out here for themselves it's happened a lot where like i've been shocked at at people kind of stabbing us in the back and even personally just it's just never worth it no human is going to be worth making allah angry with you and that's just that's just how it is that that's just the fact at the end of the day and like these small things that might help further your career now you might think may help further your career now are going to come back and collapse it later and there's just I don't know. I just think there's, there, there, like I mentioned, there's way more blessing in staying away from haram and it will be replaced with better. And, you know, I think people also respect these days when if you're like, I'm Muslim, I don't drink. Like, people respect that. And I think, you know, you can lean into that a little more and, like, it's it's better to stand by who you are and your, and your, uh, and like, you know, your your morals and your standards you set for yourself than caving into what, 
what other people like and even on even on a business level i i, I really think people respect that more than than they even would have you wouldn't impress them by drinking but people are like okay like they can respect you staying away from it you know but at the end of the day it's all about making allah happy and you know we know what's wrong and what we shouldn't do and we should just do our best to stay away from it beautiful i love it you got to stand for something or fall for anything and you're standing for something one of the most beautiful things and that's yeah. your dean this way of life that brings you that contentment that peace that money can't buy and tell us about this uh this is you now yeah alhamdulillah yeah what do you think uh, uh tell us about where this is for someone like snoop dogg or some of these athletes they they don't know where this is at and do you think maybe you can plan a trip? You know, you can invite someone to come visit so they can see firsthand like what's going on in this part of the world. Yeah, so this is in Jerusalem in Palestine at Masjid al-Aqsa. Well, that's technically the whole complex is Masjid al-Aqsa. That's that's called the Dome of the Rock, though, um, and that's a very important uh, spot. And I think all three major religions in Islam. That's where the Night Ascension was with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A lot of prophets, a lot of people in the history of our religion have been in that area and been around there but very that's the third holiest site in our religion and islam and uh yeah i'm i'm palestinian like i mentioned uh and i never really visited till 2017 um so again even that like i kind of just grew up as like an american kid um kind of de- detached from my culture even the language as well um the last couple of years i've really put in some work and i still have a lot of work to do to learn the language better uh, for multiple reasons, but uh, yeah, I love Palestine. I wish I could go as much as I could. Kind of at this point, you know, my parents are really scared of me even going to visit because I've posted so much about it. Uh, last time I was there, I got stopped, you know, and my phone got looked through at the at the Israeli border and stuff like that. It's not the simplest thing for Palest- for Palestinians to go visit, and you know, like I mentioned about me kind of realizing my platform for. Um, spreading the message of Islam, I realize the same thing for uh, spreading, you know, awareness of what's happening. And obviously, Palestine hits home to me because I'm full Palestinian. Um, there's a lot of things that are happening around the world that should have awareness spread to them. And unfortunately, a lot of other things don't get as much light uh, spread on them. But like for me, I'm Palestinian. Something that I really, you know, care about and has affected my family. And I love it. I love Palestine, and I love, you know, the last year there was a lot, unfortunately, going on during Ramadan. Um, and, you know, I realized that I had to use my platform for good. Even recently, actually, uh, it's kind of a, I probably shouldn't be talking about it because it kind of caused a little bit of issues for, for me and some of my friends. But some of my friends were visiting um, with some coworkers that are Israeli. Um, some of my friends were visiting and I kind of posted about it. And, you know, it's just one of those things where I feel like uh, I'm trying to, one, educate myself a little more on, on what's gone on in the conflict. And to educate the people around me. So even my friends that are not Israeli, like I'm talking about like my friends just from Brazil and from wherever they're that were visiting. I, you know, I kind of had some conversations with them, letting them know, hey, you know, I don't blame you for not knowing, but like, you know, there's a lot going on there and you should kind of know. And, you know, they know I'm Palestinian or whatever. So like it's I'm trying to learn for myself and I'm trying to learn to also, you know, help spread some awareness because historically Palestinians have not really had a voice. Um, in like mainstream media, I guess you'd say again, and like this, you know how it is. You know, a lot of people have been scared to speak on it. Even myself, I kind of every time I post, I'm kind of like, well, I don't know if this is going to hurt me later in the future with me trying to visit or you know with business. I don't know, but like again, back to what I said, like I really don't care because I think it's uh, I'm more scared of facing Allah and Him telling me why didn't you use your platform to spread this, you know, and like I I don't want to act like. I'm saying that now and I hope I can live by that, you know, but I know it's not the easiest thing for other people as well. So it just kind of like, I'm just kind of at this point in my life, at least I'm kind of just like, Hey, I got to do what I got to do. Whatever happens happens. And I know that a little guide us towards whatever. So like when I see an opportunity that I have to speak out on it, I do. And uh, yeah, that's, that's what that was. And I'm trying to, again, educate myself a little more. And when times to talk about it, the times to talk about it. So. Yeah, I've been around a lot of fighters. You know, I teach for a living martial arts, and uh, oh wow, okay. You know, I didn't know that. Go, I mean, yeah. I've I've been uh, I've seen your show for years now, by the way, and congratulations on everything. And the new masjid I saw recently, mashallah, or the new center, I guess. Uh, yeah. 
but I didn't know that. I didn't know the martial arts thing, which is awesome. I got to yeah. take some lessons from you. Yeah, inshallah. When you come down to Chicago, yeah, we're working on, we're trying to open up the Dean Center. Yeah, right? we're working on towards that. But my point, what I was, what I wanted to say was that I've been around, you know, a lot of tough individuals, but some are actually, when it comes down to this, what you're saying, this true bravery, courage is what you're doing because you can be a fighter, you can be somebody who's a champion in UFC, but when it comes down to standing, because you're out there and you're getting all of the uh, hoorays and all of the props and that's feeding your ego and your desire and you're just feeling great but what are you doing with that at the end of the day right when it's time to go ahead and stand for something yeah. like, like Muhammad Ali did like Malcolm X did like some of the giants who are remembered today many of these people are scared they're cowards yeah and, and yeah. I really commend you for that for having such a big platform and you're actually talking the way you're talking no I appreciate and it but honestly like I haven't even done anything compared to what I should have done and should be doing. And at least for me, that's what I'm trying to just start. You know, I'm trying to trying to do something and inshallah at least I'm sure I'm able to do a lot more than I am now. But I I appreciate it. I mean, number one thing for me is again educating myself so I actually know what I'm talking about and I'm not just following trends as a lot of people on the internet do. And obviously, like I said, the Palestinian conf I don't even want to call it a conflict, the Palestinian occupation, Palestinian situation is something that hits a lot closer to home because my dad was there in the in the 60s when he, you know he went hiding in the mountains when they were invading our village so like it's you know i have to i have to who's going to speak on it if we don't and like i said there's a lot of other things that are happening like with the with the uyghurs and the you know a lot of people around the world and you know i i try not to like overwhelm myself because the way i am is like all right if i do this that means i have to do th this and i have to do that and whatever and then i end up not doing anything so like for me i'm just trying to and, you know, at least a couple posts, at least a couple interviews like this, inshallah, like uh, if I can just start doing a little bit, inshallah, it'll lead to me being able to do a lot more. And a lot of us can band together and do a lot together. And alhamdulillah, I think that's another thing that's been really inspiring to me is like since I've posted anything, a lot of other like Muslim influencer, I don't look at myself as an influencer, but other like people on social media, basically Muslim people that do social media and stuff like that or Palestinians have reached out and like, you know, like kind of. Like even you're talking about fighters, Bla Muhammad, the UFC fighter, like me and him kind of like became good friends based on both of us posting about Palestine a lot. And he's Palestinian and like we bonded over that other like people as well, like just seeing that we're Muslim. I know it's, you know, you know how it is. Like it's it's cool when you meet another Muslim, there's like this special connection. So like there's that and then throw on top of it being Palestinian too, like and supporting the cause, you know, like it's cool. It's been it's been cool. It's been a blessing to like meet people. And it, it just inspires you to want to do more. And again, Habib, I have to give all the credit in the world to him. Like, I think he's the guy that really made me like, all right, wait, what am I doing here? I love being Muslim and I'm proud of being Muslim. And I want to talk about it because seeing what he did, he did, he is, I you know our generation is Muhammad Ali. And he really like, for me, at least he kicked that door wide open. And I'm like, okay, he made me even more proud to, to be Muslim. So, you know, there's people that are doing a lot more than I am and that we are. And I'm just trying to, all on their footsteps, inshallah. So, mashallah, alhamdulillah. Very nice to hear. Just a couple more questions before we conclude. Tell me, you now suffered a little bit of uh, backlash. So, you got a lot of support, a little bit of backlash, but sometimes just a little bit to have somebody crumble and just, you know, go in a shell and not come out again. Was it worth it at the end? And for somebody out there, some celebrity, someone has a big following, they're also uh, watching us and they're also getting motivated, but they're worried and you know you can't please everybody yeah. so you had some some people you know yeah. say some things how'd you deal with it and what would you say was it worth it at the end yeah, yeah. so I, and I i'm referring to, to this post the post that you made this one here beautiful post again you're at the first house of worship built by abraham to commemorate the worship of one and only one god this is it mecca kaaba so this is what you did yeah and you yeah. just you invited people to go ahead and have a relationship with the creator of the heavens and the earth and some people said some things. So how, how was that? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, again, Alhamdulillah, I've been making, I've been pretty like on social media. Because if I'm, uh, let me just, I'm uh, sorry to interrupt you because yeah. you you went into a shell, if I understood the first time this happened, you were younger. Exactly, yeah. And you experienced yeah. somewhat some uh, bullying and some insults. What were yeah. those insults? And what? And then you kind of like, you, you were timid to speak up again. No, 100%. So that's what I was going to say is like, Alhamdulillah, I've been lucky now with 11 years of experience online. Like, yeah, when I was first 14 years old, and that's my first three, four, five months in this world, 
to be kind of like shot down by again one of the leading figures in the industry at the time oh your mom wears a scarf on her head ha ha and he's laughing like that like i didn't know how to deal with it i you know, wait wait leading a leading figure in industry was mocking like this yeah like like i meant like the example i gave earlier like imagine i joined i joined psg and messi was making fun of my mom for wearing a hijab like that's exactly Who's, what happened. join who ps what psg uh the soccer team psg oh. messi okay or like let you know messi is like one of the most famous soccer give me my my, my generation like jordan <laughs> my exactly you join the bulls and michael jordan is is just you know coming at you for being your name is yusuf haha ha, your mom wears a scarf haha ha. that's exactly what happened so like i a little kid joining face clan it was like a little basketball fan joining the bulls exactly like that and the michael jordan of our team was coming at me so as a 14 year old of course i went in my shell completely like you said so um again it comes with age comes with maturing and stuff for me to kind of break out of that shell but even more you know even more recently it's because like i mentioned it was because of someone like habib like someone else showing how it needs to be done and like then i kind of had this realization what am i doing like you know the last couple of years i wasn't like scared or wasn't it wasn't even like that i just didn't think about it um but at first definitely i think um back to your question about like the, the criticism that i've got that post specifically the uh, about me being muslim i didn't really get much i mean i didn't notice like i said i've been doing this for like 11 years now so like I don't even read comments anymore. Hate comments. Like I genuinely, alhamdulillah, don't feel anything when I read a comment about, like the only thing I care about is my family and I have kept them completely private and away from the internet for that reason. So like someone could say whatever they want about me. It really doesn't affect me. Um, I think the Palestinian stuff, the Palestine stuff kind of was the more shaky thing that kind of, you know, could have caused some disruption in my life and some problems. And like, I have to just be honest for me, um, it's a lot easier for me to make these, uh, I guess, quote unquote, risky statements and posts because like, like I'm, I'm one of the founders of my company. I'm one of the owners of the company. And like, you know, it doesn't mean I'm in, I have like immunity to anything happening to me, but it's my company, you know? And like, it's, it, I'm not going to get kicked out for speaking on my people being, you know, uh, being oppressed um it definitely can cause problems but at the end of the day it's, it's a lot harder for someone like me to get pushed out of my position than it might be from for other people so i just got to be honest it's you know i i i don't want to make it sound like everyone should be doing this and that like everyone has their own situation and story and everyone can make change in their own way but for me i'm you know it's a, it's a little easier for me to just speak on what i want to speak on without uh having to really worry um but with that being said now in 2022 you know, everyone knows the culture is a little different. It's a little, uh, you could say one wrong thing and you can be absolutely canceled for the rest of your life. And that might happen. I don't know. We'll just see what the next couple of years uh, are like with me. But like, it's like I said, I have a little more of protection one and two, like, alhamdulillah, um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm definitely, I'm definitely not where I want to be. I'm not like acting like I'm going to retire tomorrow. And, but like, I've, I'm, I'm, I've, currently setting myself up inshallah i'm trying even with my company right even if something was to happen to me i own the company i still own shares in the company and stuff like that and like my life's not going to be over i'm not going to be completely out of work for example if i was to be you know pushed out of any position or whatever so again i just want to make that distinction clear like it is easier for me you know so like i can't blame other people for not speaking as much but like that's why i really am not scared of anyone coming at me for speaking my mind is because like they can't really, you know, I, I, I'm, it, this is my company. One of the other founders with me is also a Palestinian as well. And like, you know, it's just, it is what it is. And if people, if, if, if the time comes where there's some pressure and there's some, you know, there's a, there's a point where I have to like kind of choose between the two sides and I'm just going to do what I got to do for me, you know, and that I'm, that I'm, that, that will put me in a vision where I'm um, okay with taking whatever I'm doing to Allah and, whatever happens happens so and sorry i kind of didn't explain that well but my my main point is that like i'm a, i'm in a lot easier position than other people are and like that's why i gotta just i gotta say what i gotta say because not everyone has that opportunity so and what you're saying is alhamdulillah you're praising the most high just like habib did you're living the way of jesus of moses abraham and you're trying to live a morally upright life and I'm sure many parents, you know, would love to have their kids quit drinking alcohol, doing drugs. So the message is a positive message. It's a message that helps 
helps deliver change and helps deliver that good that comes from that change. And I think if more people accept this, uh, like the Snoop Doggy Dogs and all these you <laughs> mentioned, and it's, 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 it's the house of peace. So we're inviting people to the house of peace. I don't think there should be any objection to that. Now, people are free to do whatever they want. But this is the solution, the antidote for many, if not all the social ill. I think you're right. That point, just real fast. That's also a main thing. I know I'm not. I know everything I'm saying is is good and positive, and I'm not saying anything wrong. And I'm not, you know, like I. That's why I'm so comfortable speaking my mind because I know it's right is what I'm saying. And you're right, 100. percent I'm pushing a positive message. And even like I told you, a lot of the guys that I know that have come to me over the years. I know I can see why you don't drink after drinking the whole night before. And I can see why you don't do this. And Alhamdulillah, you know, it's, that's not me. It's Islam. And, and I think people like are just not exposed to the fact that people live life away from these things. So yeah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. There's okay. nothing to hide when you're pushing a positive message. Anyways. That's phase apex here on the Dean show. Thank you for being with us, my young brother. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me. My God Almighty, Allah, the creator, continue to bless you, preserve you, and use you for this Dean. All of us, inshallah. Thank you so much. And that was our brother Faze Apex. I want to thank you, young brother, for being on the Dean show. He's running one of the biggest gaming organizations in the world. And we could take a, a few good lessons from this young man. What, what helps him to be so disciplined? What helps him to stay with Salah, establishing that connect, direct connection with his creator five times a day minimum in Salah. And where other people are drinking and doing drugs and life's upside down, he's not deviating from that. He's got the courage to invite others to it. And that's what we're inviting you to also. Something that can help Snoop Doggy Doggy and all the other famous celebrities out there, the Johnny Depps. I mean, these are people who have a big influence, but you can see you know, people are chasing their desires and they forget about the reality of death. They forget about the reality of what comes after this life. And they just put money as the number one target. Fame is the number one target. But at the end of the day, all this stuff does not give the heart what it needs. There will always be a void. And you cannot fill that void with all of these things and expect the pain to go away. You can numb it like many do by doing all the drugs and the partying and just stay, listening to the music day and night, bobbing your head to the 50 cents and the Snoopies and whatnot. You know, at the end of the day, you're going to die. And this is this young brother's thinking ahead, smart individual to think about these things. How many young boys, young men, young women are thinking about these very important questions? What's the purpose of life? Why am I here? So if you can go ahead and ponder over some advice he was giving, what we started off with, if you're missing that peace and contentment and purpose in life, look into this beautiful way of life. And I got something for you. You can visit thedeanshow.com to get a free copy of the Quran. And if you still have any questions, call us 1-800-662-ISLAM. And we'll see you next time. And also make sure to uh, support our project that's coming up. We're trying to establish the Dean Center, a masjid, mega dawah center. So make sure that you go ahead and contribute, be a part of history where we have over 300 million Americans and the majority, they don't know what Islam is. They don't know what Islam is. Submission to the creator, not the creation. So we're going to be helping to educate because education is key. You got so much negative propaganda and hate out there. We're trying to combat that with the proper knowledge that people need so they can have a better understanding. And inshallah, they can also go ahead and gain what he gained and what we were talking about so we'll see you next time here on the dean show thank you very much for tuning in until then peace be with you assalamu alaikum this is your brother hamza andreas Dorzis, and i want every single one of you to support eddie from the dean show financially and otherwise but in what way i want you to support his new project the dean center it's going to be a transformative experience this center why because it's going to be a masjid, it's going to be a place of worship, it's also going to have fitness facilities, and it's also going to be a dawah center to call people back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Muslims and non-Muslims. And we trust Eddie completely. I for one will take a thousand bullets for Eddie. He has a vision, he has more than 15 years of experience in the dawah, he's had a huge success with the Dean Show, and he has the support of many du'at and preachers and scholars from all around the world. It's going to be an amazing project for everybody. Go to thedeancenter.org, donate now.